everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very special guest and it is my granddad. He has come along and come over to my house to film a video with me. He was only told about this I believe possibly last night this morning. I found some questions online that I'm going to ask him. Some are really sweet about like childhood and things like that. So hopefully this will be a really lovely video. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you all again in my next video. So this is the first set of questions, it's about his childhood. Number one, what games were popular when you were a kid? The ones I can remember playing outdoors would have been the spinning top with a whip. Now using, one of those. The whip, using the whip to keep the top spinning and uh, spinning a hoop with a small stick, guiding it with the stick so you didn't uh, hurt your hands. Uh, one of the pastimes, one of the favourite pastimes, would have been collecting cigarette cards. I thought you had to say cigarettes or what? Trying to match a, a full set and uh, and playing games with them. We used to flick them up. Were they actually the sold in cigarette cigarettes? They came in cigarette yeah. packets. Number two, tell me about your best friend growing up. Have you kept in touch? Yes, uh, we did keep in touch. Uh, he became my best man when I married. Uh, regrettably, he's he died uh, ten years ago, but um, we remain good friends uh, throughout our lifetime. Number three, do you remember any particular sadness in your growing up years? Were there any tragedies or events that shaped you? The biggest tragedy would have been the uh, during the wartime, the Second World War when uh, one of my classmates was um, killed with the V2 rocket which mm. hit her house overnight. Oh, that's horrible. Mm. Yeah, very sad oh. for the whole class and school in fact. Yeah. How old would you have been? I would have been about uh, 12. The secondary school, just about. Just, yeah. yeah. That's horrible. Um, number four, what types of things did you do as a kid that kids of the newer generation don't do anymore? Uh, a paper round would have been... Oh, uh, paper route, yeah. Paper round delivering newspapers would have been one of the... One we of still the, do that now though, don't we? We still do it now. Yeah. The paper boys are still in, in existence. But uh, it was a good job to have, uh, delivering papers, and made pocket money. Playing, playing with friends. We, we used to be able to go over open fields yeah. that were near us and uh, have great fun. <laughs> yeah, don't, it's too scary now to... Mm. Um, number five, what is the fondest memory you have of your mother and father or grandfathers, grandmothers? Uh, many, uh, many and varied. My mother would have been one of the favourites for buying me penny bars of uh, chocolate. <laughs> Um, this section is about jobs and hobbies. Number six, what was your first job? What did you like or hate about it? My first job was in the builder's merchant's yard. The thing I disliked most about it was the boredom because we were not a very busy builder's <laughs> yard. Yes. This is what I like about this because I didn't know that. Number seven, did you go to college and what did you study? No. There was no after school activities. I left school at the age of 14 and went straight into work. Is that what everyone did? No. Uh, if you, you could go into secondary college and, and advance into universities, but that was for... Well, wealthy people? Not necessarily wealthy, but they would have needed to be a little cleverer than I. Oh! <laughs> Uh, number eight, what hobbies have you had that brought you joy? Did you collect anything? Yes. Elastic bands, Grandad? Yes, yes. <gasps> yes, I, I probably shouldn't talk about this, but oh. I, I was a bird's egg collector. That's so random. Wild birds, and I uh, <laughs> had quite a nice collection, but obviously that nowadays is frowned upon. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever heard of that. Did you enjoy reading, writing or creating art? What was the first book you can remember loving? The Day of the Triffid would have been one of my most remembered novels. As a child, what were your career aspirations? Did those change as you got older? Well, I've got to be honest and say that I had no real ambition. The, the point of leaving school was to get a job and uh, it would have been more or less any job. You didn't want to be anything? 
Well, career career forming uh, became evident a bit later in life. Going on to night school and making up for lost time, lost education. Yeah. I think fate mainly took you into employment when I when I had national service to look forward to at 18. Yeah. That was always a cloud uh, hanging Looming over your head. Yeah. And so you didn't want to go into a career in case it all changed? Yes, and, and, a, and a career path really didn't form until I came out of the army. Yeah. Um, and you ended up being a gas? I ended up, up <laughs> again, uh, the career path was, was uh, handed down to me by my father, who was a gas fitter. Right. And I went and joined him on the gas company at that time. This section is to do with family and friends. It says, have you asked your parents or grandparents how they met and what their courtship was like? Certainly my parents, I know how they met. They both had, they both had a distant relation who had a farm at South Wooden Ferrers and they used to spend their holidays there and Aww. that was how they met Aww. and a friendship and relationship formed from that time. Do you think like these days it's all online, you meet people online a lot mm. of the times or in pubs? Mm. Well they, like met, they quite met a sweet story. by a haystack on a farm. Aww. Um, and it says, how did you and your spouse meet? How did you know that she was the one to marry? So about, I think it's five years now, or coming up to five years, is it? Mm. Um, my nan passed away, so they were married for a long time. Over 50 years, yeah, yeah 56 years. We were a blind date. <laughs> my, I had oh, a friend. I think I know this story. Yes, yeah, so I had a friend who was interested in uh, taking a girl out. And this girl wouldn't go out unless... She had a friend with her. She had a friend with her. Who happened to be Nan. <laughs> and happened to be uh, Pauline. And um, and I was the friend of this <laughs> a friend. A double date. <laughs> and as for knowing, uh, it was my future wife who was the one who went home and said, I'm going to marry that chappy. Uh, oh, really? So I didn't know. that was... Um, that was, uh, my fate was already uh, Chosen. predestined. <laughs> it says, as an adult, did you have any close friends who you've kept in touch with? Well, the friend I'd had from school. But we met up trips to trips to see the tulip fields. Yes, we, we remained good friends throughout our, throughout our lives. I became godfather to his daughter when she was born. He became a godfather to my children when they were born. Name one thing about each of your children that stuck out to you as they were growing up so granddad has two girls yes i do um uh, three years separate them the second child i was uh, privileged to watch my mum being born and uh, i i suppose looking back that would have given us some special kind of relationship Aww. it says name something about raising children that changed from your first child to your last there's only three years it's not there's only three years but there's no doubt that uh, you don't get any pre uh, teaching on on how to bring up children you learn the lessons as you go along if you're any good at it then you're <laughs> a good parent if most people make mistakes from time to time you try to learn from them this one's the places you lived it says what do you remember about your childhood home where did you grow up and where do you consider your hometown uh my my hometown is Rayleigh, without a doubt that we i moved into a bungalow with my parents when i was about three years of age and lived there until the time that i left when i got married um, it says, did you ever move, like, out of the area, I'm assuming? Only for a short while. I, I went to live with my wife's parents, yeah. uh, my in-laws. Uh, we were, at that time, saving uh, to buy a property. And uh, four years living with them gave us the opportunity to do just that. So you've always lived in Essex? Oh, yes. Yeah. Where would you have liked to live but never got there? I have a great affinity with Somerset, uh, having spent quite a number of years going down there on holiday, 
we formed relationships down there and, and it, it's one place I would have seriously considered moving. See, what I find really funny about that is that before we moved to Kent, I actually asked him if we could move to Somerset because I used to go on holiday with Grandad every year and I fell in love with the place too. It's very strange that Grandad, well not strange, but a coincidence that Grandad has also said that that's one place that he would like to live because it's top on my list too. Looking forward, how do you want your family and friends to remember you? Personally, what? I think Grandad's going to live forever, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose uh, I'm, the answer would be the same for most people. You like to be well thought of. What more could I say? <laughs> <laughs> what are your most pr What are you most proud of in your life? any relationship or professional achievement? I'm proud to have uh, married the girl that I did marry uh, and in the last few years of her life I was extremely grateful that I was able to uh, perform duties that helped her with later problems and health problems. Grandad kind of became her primary carer and Nan had kidney failure and she, I've spoken about it lots of times I believe on my channel and my blog, that she had home dialysis which is where they pump out the blood, clean it all and Grandad actually learned how to do that for her which obviously really eased everything and her kind of last few years I suppose. How has your faith or spirituality changed throughout your life? I don't know that it has changed. I, I believe I believe there's something out there. I believe in more in life. I believe in in doing right in life, uh, doing living by the right code. And uh, I just hope that that is enough to carry me through. <laughs> so we are now on the very last question. The last question is, what was the kindest thing you've done for someone else? So I think that my granddad is a really generous and kind person anyway, and I think that probably the kindest, obviously nobody's gonna say I'm really kind and say all these things because that's, there's a word for it, isn't it? Like blowing your own trumpet. But I think the kindest thing that my granddad's ever done is what he did for my nan, and looking after her for kind of, well, all of their marriage probably, but mainly the last few years of her life. I believe that's probably the kindest thing that my granddad's ever done. I'd like to think so. It would be nice to be uh, to be uh, recognised for that. So that's it. I want to say a big thank you to my granddad for coming on my channel and having the courage to come on my channel. I felt very nervous before filming this because I've never had anyone on my channel apart from hubby. But I think it went okay and I hope you enjoyed it. I'm hoping to get my mum on a video at some point in the future and yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you all soon. Goodbye.